win ministries. Seeking God to impact nations. Our topic today is a question. It's a question. To you and to me. I want to ask a question. Have you taken resolutions concerning raising the tabernacle of David? Because today we already in the second month of the year 2024. Have you taken resolutions concerning raising this tabernacle of David? And probably somebody is asking, what is this tabernacle of David? Forget about resolutions. Forget about raising it. What is this tabernacle of David? The Hebrew word for the word tabernacle or tent is the word ohel. Ohel means a dwelling place. It means a home. It also means a place of refuge. The tabernacle of David is referred to three places in the Bible. The first reference is Isaiah 16 verse 5. The second reference is what Mama delved in for so long when she was teaching us right from the start of this year, Amos chapter 9. Verse 11. And she taught us all the way to verse 13. But then in the book of Acts, chapter 15, the apostle James, in his own words, makes reference to the tabernacle of David. And James says in that book of Acts God is going to help his people to rebuild, to repair Mungu anakwenda kuwasaidia watu wake kujenga tena au kufanya ukarabati to raise kuinua the tabernacle of David hema ya Daudi but there's something there's a word that he puts there lakini kuna kitu kuna neno ambalo analiweka hapo if you read that verse he says the fallen tabernacle of David lakini ukiangalia ule mstari unasema hema la Daudi lililoanguka why the fallen I'm just laying a foundation for us to understand the tabernacle of David. Abraham was called out from the Gentiles. And God made a covenant with him. And that covenant involved bringing a nation out of Abraham. And therefore God was in covenant with the nation of Israel. Because he was in covenant with Abraham who was the father of Israel. Israel. Then there came the Mosaic law and we know about this, the system of sacrifices all that was with the children of Israel 
The Gentiles were excluded. They were not part of this covenant. So the system of sacrifices, the mosaic law went on and on. And it is during that period of David that we see David also Making reference and talking about the tabernacle. And this tabernacle or tent of David was a precursor of the temple that Solomon built. And we understand that the tabernacle of David. David housed the Ark of the Covenant. David wanted to build a temple for the Lord. But actually that was done by his son Solomon. And we are made to understand that it was made of elaborate design. Uh, and mama told us that David in preparation for his son to build the temple the in today's currency he saved equivalent to 20 billion dollars just for Solomon to build the temple. Now, together with what Solomon had, they came up with an elaborate design of a structure. And they built a magnificent temple. But it was still under the systems of sacrifices, Lakini, the law. Bado chini ya ya thabiu, au and we all understand, Na si at least many of us, Angalau, wengi wetu. that in the Old Testament, men could not keep the full law. And if you broke one law, you have broken all. No wonder Moses, when he came down and found the children of Israel in sin, he broke those tablets. A prophetic sign that man cannot keep the full law. He was called back for, for 40 more days and nights. And he was given other tablets of the law. But this time round, he was told, Moses, don't show this to the people. These ones go and hide them in the Ark of the Covenant. In other words, the Ark of the Covenant, which we know signified the presence of God. Inside there was the manna. And there was also the budding staff of error. But now we have the tablets also inside. And on top it is covered by the mercy seed. The law could only be fulfilled in Jesus Christ. So as long as Jesus was the mediator between man and God, then the law was fulfilled. So Jesus comes to mediate between man and God. The only man who lived a sinless life without sin his blood pure to save you and I the law could only be kept preserved and fulfilled 
in Jesus Christ. Sheria ingeweza tu kutunzwa, kushikwa, kufuatwa na kutimilizwa katika Kristo Yesu. Then God says to Moses at the mercy seat right between the uh, cherub, uh, the cherubim uh, that's anama, where i will meet you and that's where you will hear my voice mungu anamwambia musa ya kwamba pale katika kiti cha rehema katikati ya yale makerubi hapo ndipo nitakapokutana nawe hapo ndipo utakapoisikia sauti yangu many years later miaka mingi baadaye jesus christ appears yesu kristo anatokea he appears in flesh anatokea katika mwili and jesus marks the end of the mosaic law the end of the system of sacrifices because he was the final sacrifice yesu ndio anaweka mwisho wa sheria ya musa anaweka mwisho wa kutoa dhabihu katika hekalu kwa sababu yeye ndio aliyekuwa dhabihu kuu ya mwisho now we understand that the old testament was fallen sasa sisi tuelewa ya kwamba agano la kale lilikuwa ni lile lilowanguka. It was a failed system. Ilikuwa ni mfumo ambao haukufanya kazi pasavyo. But Jesus comes now to institute a new system. Sasa Yesu anakuja kuanzisha mfumo mpya that will never fail. Ambao kamwe hautashindwa. That will never fail. Ambao kamwe hautashindwa. A system that is perfect because it is fulfilled in him Christ Jesus. Mfumo ambao ni kamilifu kwa sababu unatekelezwa au kutimizwa ndani yake yeye Kristo Yesu. Now on that basis. Sasa katika msingi huo. Acts of the Apostle 15 verse 16. Matendo ya Mitume 15 mstari 16. James right, says these words. Uh, Yakobo anatuambia maneno haya. As it is recorded in the book of uh, Acts 15. Kama ilivyoandikwa katika kitabu cha matendo ya mitume 15 mstari ule wa 16. After this I will return and I will rebuild the tabernacle of David. Baada ya mambo haya nitarejea nami nitaijenga tena nyumba ya Daudi which it, has fallen down iliyoanguka I will rebuild its ruins nitaijenga tena manguko yake Jesus Christ says Yesu Kristo anasema I will destroy this temple nita livunja hili hekalu and in three days na katika siku tatu i will rebuild it nitalijenga tena when you talk about the tabernacle of david napongea kuhusu hekalu au hema ya david you are talking about jesus christ himself unaongea kuhusu yesu kristo mwenyewe the resurrection ule ufufuo of jesus christ wa yesu kristo is the rebuilding ndio kule kujenga upya of the tabernacle of david kwa hema ya david You and I wewe na mimi we need to find our place tuhitaji kupata mahali petu in that resurrection of Jesus Christ katika ule ufufuo wa Yesu Kristo and that is only through faith and na, believing in Jesus na Christ na hiyo yaweza tu tokea kupitia imani na katika kumwamini Yesu Kristo now my question to you is sasa swali langu kwetu sisi ni hili have you made resolutions je umeshafanya mam concerning raising this tabernacle of david au umeshachukua hatua za kimaamuzi kuhusiana na kujenga upya hii hema ya daudi have you taken promises je umeshachukua hizo ahadi have you made those promises je umeshazifanyia kazi hizo ahadi what is your promise ahadi yako ni ipi what is your resolution maamuzi yako ni yapi and i call them resolutions because You cannot live on only one commandment. Na mimi naaita ni maamuzi yani mengi kwa sababu huwezi kuishi tu juu ya amri moja. You live upon fulfilling many commandments. Unaishi juu ya kutimiza amri nyingi. So have you made resolutions? Sasa umeshafanya maamuzi? What are your resolutions? Na maamuzi yako ni yapi? About a concerning raising this tabernacle of David. Kuhusiana na kuijenga upya hii hema ya Daudi. Friends, marafiki The difference between one year and the other year tofauti kati ya mwaka mmoja na mwaka mwingine when we say at the beginning of the year happy new year tunaposema mwanzo wa mwaka heri ya mwaka mpya it's not just in the numbers sio tu katika nambari if you look at it critically ukitazama kwa kina it's about fulfilled resolutions ni kuhusiana na yale ma, au hatua za kimaamuzi zilizotekelezwa it's about 
promises that were taken and they were kept ni kuhusu ahadi ambazo mtu alizichukua alafu akasimama nazo na kutembea nazo many christians today kristo wengi leo we have a lot of baggage tuna mizigo mingi we have so much carryovers tuna mizigo mingi ambayo huku tuliacha tukaibeba nayo tena kuingia tena mwaka mwingine the carryovers sasa hii tuliyoibeba are because of unfulfilled resolutions kutoka kule tulikotoka ni kwa sababu ya hatua za kimaamuzi ambazo hazijatimizwa because of unkept promises ni kwa sababu ya ahadi ambazo hatukuzishikilia na kuzifuatilia na kuzifanyia kazi we keep on asking god for new things tunaendelea kumwomba mungu atupe vitu vipya new things nipe vitu vipya but if we were to keep our promises that we took lakini kama tungezishikilia zile ahadi ambazo tulizipata huko Re- nyuma resolutions that we made na hatua za kimaamuzi ambazo tulizichukua then it will be about continuous fulfillment of god's agenda in our lives basi itakuwa ni kuhusu muendelezo wa utimilifu wa ajenda za Mungu katika maisha yetu so what is the carry over kwa hiyo hivi vitu tulivyovibeba huku na kuja navyo huku ni vipi christians carry over is the unfulfilled promises ni yale au zile ahadi ambazo hazijatimia resolutions that were taken but were not fulfilled tuo za kimaamuzi ambazo watu walizichukua alafu hawakuzifanyia kazi kuzitekeleza we carry them into the new year basi tunazibeba tunaenda nazo mwaka mpya then we ask god for new things alafu tukiwa kule tunamwambia mungu tupe vipya give us new things tupe vipya you are doing a new thing Jambo jipya tena. Nipe jipya. Yet there are promises. Lakini bado kuna ahadi. Resolutions. Na maamuzi that are carried over. Ambayo kule hatujayatimiza, tumeyabeba, tumekuja nayo huko. Which is baggage. Ambayo sasa inafanyika kuwa ni mizigo. On our shoulders. Kwenye mabega yetu. Friends, marafiki. I have seen good people in this world. Nimeona watu wazuri katika ulimwengu huu. In this life I have seen bad people also. Katika maisha haya nimeona watu wabaya pia. The difference between good people and bad people. Tofauti kati ya watu wema na wabaya. Good people take promise they they make promises and they keep them. Watu wazuri ni kwamba wana chukua ahadi na wanazifanyia kazi zitokee. Bad people lakini watu wabaya they make promises wao wanatoa ahadi and they don't keep them alafu hawazitimizi au kuzitekeleza look at your life angalia maisha yako your relatives ndugu zako your colleagues wale ambao ni rafiki zako au wenzi wako people around you watu wanaokuzunguka how many promises have you made to them ni ahadi ngapi umezitoa kwao and you have not fulfilled na hujazitekeleza Look at the church. Angalia kanisa. I'm talking about spiritual resolutions. Naongea kuhusu hatua za kimaamuzi za kiroho. Resolutions about the church, about the work of God which have not been fulfilled. Hatua za kimaamuzi kuhusiana na kanisa, kuhusiana na kazi ya Mungu ambazo ulizifanya au uliziweka ambazo hujazitekeleza. Then we say, alafu tunasema God do a new thing for us. Mungu fanya jambo jipya kwa ajili yetu. Do a new thing for us. Jambo jipya kwa ajili yetu. I want to submit to you. Nataka nielete kwetu. That today kwamba leo some people don't know why they are going through what they are going through. Baadhi ya watu hawajui kwa nini wanapitia kile wanachokipitia. When things happen in their lives. Mambo yakitokea maishani mwao. They cannot tell. Hawawezi hata kujua. Is it because of the sin I am committing or I am under? Je, ni kwa sababu ya dhambi ninayoifanya au ambayo niko chini yake? Is it because of sin? Ni kwa sababu ya dhambi? Or is it because of the ordained providence? I mean destiny. Au kwa sababu ya mustakabali wangu? Am I going through this because it's it's ordained destiny or it's ordained providence au oh, napitia haya ni kwa sababu haya ndivyo ilivyoandikwa kwa ajili yangu kule ninakoelekea oh is it, is it because of sin au kwa sababu ya dhambi they don't know hawajui they don't know hawajui why kwa nini carry over kwa sababu ya mizigo tuliyoibeba ya promises ya ahadi uh, ambazo hatujazitimiza spiritual promises hatua za kiroho ahadi Spir- za kiroho spiritual resolutions at the beginning of the year maamuzi ya kiatua ya kiroho ambayo tuliyatoa mwanzo wa mwaka we shall raise the tabernacle of david tutainua hema ya daudi we shall rebuild the tabernacle of david tutaijenga tena hema ya daudi we shall repair tutaikarabati to one month down the line 
Tayari mwezi mmoja ushaisha they have abandoned hao watu wameshaacha hiyo they have abandoned their resolutions wamesahau yale zile ahadi zao they have forgotten up in here wamesahau kuhusiana na mwaka mpya it is now their personal agenda sasa imekuwa ni agenda binafsi families familia resolutions in families maamuzi au hatua za kimaamuzi katika familia unkept ambazo hazija fanywa kazi personal resolutions maamuzi yako binafsi unkept ambayo hujayatekeleza i have another question for you nina swali jingine kwa ajili yako what is the weight of your carry over je uzito wako ulionao wa yale uliyobeba kutoka mwaka jana ni mkubwa kiasi gani what is the weight of your carry over huo uzito uliyobeba ni mkubwa kiasi gani have you just added another one au umeshaongeza uzito mwingine that you are going to raise rebuild the tabernacle of david ya kwamba naenda kujenga kukarabati hema ya daudi christians those who are christians wale ambao ni wa kristo they know this wanajua hili that christianity is a relationship under repair kwamba ukristo ni mahusiano yaliyo chini ya ukarabati christianity ukristo is relationship ni mahusiano under repair yaliyo chini ya ukarabati and therefore hivyo basi every day kila siku every night kila usiku before a christian sleeps kabla mkristo hajalala he needs to sit and take stock inabidi aketi na he takes stock anakuangalia kufanya tathmini today leo just before i go to bed today kabla sijalala today what are the sins i committed today ni jambi gani ambazo nimezitenda leo a christian christo has to ask lazima aulize at the end of the day before he goes to bed mwisho wa siku kabla ya kwenda kulala in which areas was i negligent today ni katika maeneo gani nilikuwa nimedharau au sikutia manani when they do that wakifanya hivyo in the night usiku they correct wana rekebisha they repair wana karabati they recreate wanatengeneza tena they rebuild wanajenga upya they raise what was broken hapo manake wanainua kile kilichovunjika a christian who goes to bed kristo anaenda kulala who does not take stock ambaye hakae na kufanya tathmini of what was neglected that day ya kitu gani ambacho kilifanywa kilifanyo kwa uzembe au kudharauliwa of the sins they committed that day au kuhusiana na dhambi alizozitenda siku ile when they go to bed like that they sin against god wakienda kulala kwa jinsi hiyo watenda dhambi dhidi ya Mungu it is sin against god ni dhambi dhidi ya Mungu for you to continue going to bed sleeping without taking stock kwa wewe kuendelea kulala siku hata siku pasipo kufanya tathmini ya maisha without yako without reflecting which areas which word did i say that i was not supposed to say pasipo kupitia maisha yako na kujiuliza ni maeneo gani au maneno gani niliyasema ambayo sikupaswa kuyasema which area did i neglect today i need to repair eneo gani leo sikufanya vizuri nahitaji kulitengeneza kutarabati which sin did i commit today dhambi gani niliyoifanya leo then correct it basi rekebishe then repair basi ebu karabati then rebuild basi jenga tena then raise basi inua if you don't do that kama utafanya hivyo you will have so much carry over utakuwa na mizigo mingi iliyokuwa huko nyuma and concerning the tabernacle of david na kuhusiana na hekalu au nyumba ya daudi you will want one day to say let me repair it will be too late siku moja utasema hebu leo ngoja nianze kufanya ukarabati utakuwa umechelewa sana it will be too late itakuwa umechelewa sana why, why? kwa nini take an example of a bush in your backyard hebu chukua mfano wa kichaka kilicho nyuma ya nyumba yako when the grass starts growing majani yanapoanza kukua if you don't take action immediately and cut the grass when it's still Uh, starting to grow kama hutachukua hatua na kuyafyeka yale majani wakati yanaanza kukua if you postpone it and postpone it ukiwa unaairisha na kuairisha you will end up taishia spending sometimes one week or sometimes months or sometimes even giving up when you want to clear the bush taishia mara nyingine kutumia wiki moja au mwezi mara nyingine hata utakata tamaa kushughulikia kile kichaa ah, take another example chukua mfano mwingine when you when you don't brush your teeth every day 
kama usipo sugua meno yako kila siku day 1 you skip kwa kwanza unaairisha day 2 you skip siku ya pili unaairisha day 3 day 4 you skip siku ya tatu ya nne the day you buy a toothbrush siku utakaponunua mswaki when you start brushing yani utakapoanza kusugua meno blood will come out damu itatoka sometimes even those teeth will come out na mara nyingine hata meno unaona utasukuma mkononi yametoka yote yanatoka yote unakuwa kibogoyo you brush and blood is coming out because una, you neglected brushing your teeth mswaki na damu inatoka kwa nini kwa sababu ulidharau kupiga mswaki kila siku take another example chukua mfano mwingine when you take long without taking a bath <laughs> unapokaa muda mrefu pasipokuoga one week you are not bathing wiki moja wewe hujaoga the day you go to bath siku utakayoenda kuoga your body will be like a crocodile skin hapo sasa mwili wako utakuwa na ngozi kama ya mamba you will need a rock utahitaji jiwe la kusugulia to rub your body ili utoe ule ukoko ulio kwenye mwili wako piles of dirt that have piled on your body kwa sababu ya ule uchafu ambao umekaa kwenye ngozi yako if you look at the sole of your feet ukitazama huku chini kwenye miguu yako kwenye nyayo you have not taken a bath kwa sababu hujaoga muda mrefu they will have to carry you to car wash itabidi ba, yani sio kwa wale watu wa makucha watakupeleka pale kwenye waosha magari how many christians here need to be taken to the car wash wa kristo wangapi inabidi wapelekwe kwenye kisemi ya kuoshia magari because they say rebuild but they are not rebuilding kwa sababu wanaamba bwana jenga upya hapo repair but it is empty words karabati wewe unakaa kimya titus 1 verse 16 says tito 1:16 anasema they praise me with your with their mouth wana ni sifu na vinywa vyao with their words na maneno yao but they deny me with their actions lakini hatua zao ziko mbali mio yao iko mbali nami ezekiel 30 ezekiel 33 from verse 31 33 they come to hear my words wana kuja kusikia maneno yangu they sit before my words wana keti mbele ya maneno yangu but they have no intention of doing them lakini hawana hata lengo ya kuyafanya hayo maneno they are ready to continue carrying carry over yani wao wako tayari kubeba mizigo ya mwaka jana kwa mwaka huu celebrating wana sherekea but doing nothing lakini hawafanyi chochote the word believe neno amini the word believing neno kuamini it's about doing ni kuhusu kuchukua hatua na if kutenda. you want to rebuild the tabernacle of david kama unataka kujenga tena hekema la daudi find your place in the resurrection of christ kwanza tafuta nafasi yako katika ufufuo wa kristo where are you in the resurrection uko wapi katika huo ufufuo that's why the staff of aaron was put in the ark of the covenant na ndio maana fimbo inayochipua ya aruni iliwekwa ndani ya lile sanduku la agano apostle told us that it budded overnight mtume alituambia kwamba ile fimbo ilichipua katika usiku mmoja in other words kwa maneno mengine resurrection ufufuo resurrection ufufuo resurrection ufufuo where are you in the resurrection uko wapi katika huo ufufuo beloved wapendwa christianity is about repair Ukristo ni kuhusu kukarabati maisha yetu. It's about rebuilding. Ni kuhusu kujenga tena. I want to ask a question. Nataka niulize swali. But this time I will not ask anybody to answer. Lakini sitaomba mtu yeyote ajibu. I will go to specific people. Nitaenda kwa watu mahususi. And you will not that there there are a certain category of people. Na utagundua ya kwamba kuna makundi fulani ya watu. In terms of uh, age kwa habari ya umbo because i want us to learn something kwa sababu nataka tujifunze jambo 